le conseil de M. Blegoudé a proposé que celui-ci euh, prenne la parole à un moment donné euh, de, de notre audience. Nous avons donc retenu que, euh, au titre de l'ordonnance qui avait été déjà euh, prise, que euh, euh, le conseil de M. Blegoudé prenne la, la parole pour 45 Because minutes, he is the applicant, est he will take the floor first, and then we shall uh, accord five minutes to Mr. Blegoudet if he wishes to intervene with regards to the observations and comments of his council in the same way. Et de la même we manière, nous allons octroyer 45 minutes au procureur, and procureur and et si le procureur aussi, parce qu'il faut que nous soyons à égalité d'armes, si le procureur aussi à l'intention de prendre encore quelques minutes au regard de ce que nous, nous, nous octroyons à, la, au, au, à M. La, 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 la chambre est ouverte à cela. Donc, euh, voilà ce que je, je voulais dire. Euh, le greffier aussi est avec nous aujourd'hui. Il nous a déjà donné quelques informations, mais j'imagine qu'il pourrait aussi nous, nous en apporter plus. Euh, comme on le dit euh, dans le jargon the most, français, qui peut le plus, peut le moins. So Donc, euh, si vous avez encore des informations à partager avec nous, nous restons ouvertes à, 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 ce, à ce que vous nous présentez. So, that is what Donc, I wanted to say euh, voilà un peu ce que je voulais dire. Et pour and conclure, way of conclusion, before euh, I start avant que je ne commence par uh, vous donner la parole, like je voudrais juste rappeler que nous session sommes session en session here. publique However, ici. Mais que cela n'empêche pas, si euh, cela est nécessaire, que nous puissions aller euh, à une session privée. Et donc, euh, n'hésitez pas euh, à, 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 à vous exprimer sur ce que vous voulez faire. Ceci dit, euh, Maître Knops, je vous donne la parole. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Présidente. Um, Puis-je suggérer que M. Blegoudé, qui s'exprimera pendant cinq minutes, pourrait être prévu après que nous ayons entendu euh, le, le procureur. We have debated Nous avons débattu en long et en large de la procédure avant de venir ici afternoon. ce soir. And I think et je pense que dans le point, cas d'espèce, c'est le défendeur qui devrait avoir la parole en dernier lieu. So Donc, really euh, nous avons vraiment pris sur nous d'autoriser M. Blegoudé à après vous. Et c'est une responsabilité que nous avons prise. Prise. Et donc, euh, on ne we peut pas euh, violer the rules les règles de procédure de cette manière-là. Je vous remercie. Merci, Madame la Présidente. J'apprécie votre recommandation. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Et je respecte votre recommandation. Merci, Madame la Présidente. 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 Merci, Madame la Présidente que je ne réponde aux écritures et aux arguments It was de l'accusation. J'aimerais, en guise d'introduction brève, vous courtly. dire qu'il y a Although quasiment six années de cela, side, dans ce même here, prétoire, même si j'étais euh, du côté gauche du prétoire, c'était donc, disais-je, il y a six ans que notre équipe de la Défense a prononcé sa déclaration liminaire dans l'affaire de M. Blegoudé. Et déjà, déjà, à l'époque, lors de cette déclaration liminaire, nous avons fait valoir que le procureur ou l'accusation avait souffert de ce que nous appelons un aveuglement délibéré dans sa poursuite de M. Blegoudé et dans la thèse développée au sujet de M. Blegoudé. Et je me souviens il y a six ans, j'avais fait une citation, j'avais cité un ouvrage extrêmement impressionnant, écrit par 
Reuven Fenton, qui est journaliste years, au New York Post. Et c'est un livre intitulé « Les années volées, persons. histoire de personnes book, emprisonnées à tort ». Et pour ce livre, Madame la Présidente, late, Madame, Carter, Monsieur les Juges, vous trouverez un avant-propos très impressionnant, rédigé par Feu Robin Carter, que l'on connaît Mr. également sous le surnom Denzel de Washington The later featured in the et movie, which was based on his life story. Denzel Washington, d'ailleurs, a joué son Ruben rôle Carter dans le film, 20 le film 2014, qui se base sur sa véritable vie. Malheureusement, Ruben Carter est décédé le 20 avril 2014 et il a été condamné à tort au départ pour trois meurtres et donc 1985. Euh, la détention à vie lui a été imposée jusqu'au moment où il fut innocenté quasiment deux décennies ago, après en 1995. Et il y a six ans, voilà les propos que j'avais cités. Et euh, ce sont des propos qui sont encore plus brûlants d'actualité maintenant. Rubin Carter a écrit « Je pense que la véritable cause des condamnations erronées est l'aveuglement délibéré. » Et c'est quelque chose que la plupart des accusés n'imaginent comme possible. Alors bien sûr, nous savons tous pertinemment que M. Lekoudé fut acquitté. Il a été acquitté en première instance avant qu'il so n'ait été demandé à la défense de présenter sa thèse. Donc, est-ce que justice n'a pas été rendue en l'espèce Est-ce que son histoire n'est pas le contraire no. de l'histoire et du récit no, de Rubin Carter the Et notre réponse est chamber non. One, non, and the appeals euh, chamber, mesdames, euh, messieurs les juges, pour Mr. les juges de truth, la chambre de première instance numéro 1 et numéro 1 et de not. la chambre d'appel qui ont confirmé l'acquittement de M. Begoudé au vu de la vérité, mais ce the ne fut pas le cas. Constructed procureur. Narrative. Le procureur qui a poursuivi sa, sa thèse sur la base d'un récit pré-construit et en dépit de neuf années d'enquête dans un pays qui n'aurait pas pu être plus favorable à sa cause et en dépit d'années de présentation d'éléments de preuve qui n'ont absolument pas confirmé le moindre du monde ce récit, le procureur n'a jamais fait le point de la situation, n'a jamais dressé de bilan et n'a jamais essayé de voir objectivement cette affaire et n'a jamais voulu voir que euh, la, que M. Blegoudé n'aurait jamais dû se retrouver devant cette cour. Due to willful blindness, the prosecution never was willing to admit L'accusation n'a jamais été disposée à admettre, n'est toujours pas disposée à admettre la vérité, euh, et à savoir qu'elle avait, pour reprendre les propos de M. le juge Anderson, mis la charrette, avant les bûches. Judge Et elle a pris comme prémisse le fait, comme l'a dit le juge Anderson dans le paragraphe 79 de ses motifs, euh, la prémisse étant que sa théorie était la théorie exacte. Alors nous savons tous quelles furent les conséquences de cet aveuglement délibéré du procureur. Ces conséquences ont été désastreuses. Car M. Legoudé a passé quasiment right euh, cinq années, à savoir 1788 jours, pour And être plus précis, en prison, day, en prison ici, president, euh, dans free. cette ville de La Haye. Et jusqu'à présent, Madame la Présidente, Can M. Legoudé n'est pas libre, libre. il est loin d'être libre. Alors, est-ce que nous pouvons came? dire que la décision d'acquittement de la Chambre de première instance, même si elle est arrivée très tôt, a réparé des années de souffrance endurées par M. Legoudé à la suite de l'aveuglement de no, l'accusation, notre réponse That's why est un here non catégorique. You today. Non. We Madame know that the threshold euh, la Présidente, c'est la raison pour laquelle nous nous trouvons ici devant vous aujourd'hui. Nous savons que le seuil by the pour satisfaire in aux response. exigences de l'article 25 a été Jonas, if Donc cela est indiqué euh, et souligné par l'accusation dans sa réponse. Mais, within, mesdames les juges, messieurs le juge, si... Which case does 
si Charles Blégoudé, euh, case does, si la cause de Charles Blégoudé ne correspond pas euh, au, à la raison d'être de l'article 85, quelle cause il correspondra Bamba, Et nous sommes également conscients de la décision euh, relative à l'indemnisation dans Bemba. However, la chambre préliminaire it, numéro it 2 a rejeté la demande de M. Bemba, la demande d'indemnisation de M. Bemba. Mais toutefois, dans son paragraphe 69 de cette décision, cette chambre a reconnu que 10 années, parce que M. Bemba, 10 années est une période considérable à passer en détention susceptible d'aboutir à des souffrances personnelles qui déclencherait une indemnisation dans de nombreux systèmes nationaux pour violation du droit fondamental à bénéficier d'un procès équitable et un procès rapide. Alors que les euh, contraintes réglementaires qui seraient dans cette décision sont telles qu'il est impossible à la Chambre d'indemniser, la Chambre toutefois considère qu'il est urgent que les États entament une, un examen du statut pour pouvoir justement envisager de euh, réfléchir à ces limites fin de la citation du paragraphe 69 de la décision relative à l'indemnisation dans l'affaire Mais Madame la Présidente, la réalité, quelle est-elle La réalité, c'est que les États partis n'ont pas réformé le statut. Même pendant la toute dernière session, nous avançons que les mains de cette Chambre ne sont pas liées comme l'étaient les mains de la Chambre dans l'affaire Bemba. Pour n'être pas liées par les limites du statut, si le but de la Cour est d'être un phare à l'avant-garde de toutes les questions qui sont du domaine des droits humains individuels, comme la Chambre dans sa décision relative à l'indemnisation dans l'affaire Bemba, alors nous avançons, Madame la Présidente, de cette Chambre pourrait appliquer ce que nous appellons une interprétation téléologique de l'article 85.3, à savoir que cet article est qu'il relève tout à fait de l'esprit de l'objectif et de l'article 85.3 de cette loi à la demande de Et une fois de plus, si les rédacteurs avait pensé à une cause pour There was ce qui no est de l'article 85.3. C'est la cause de M. Charles Bégaudet, car il y a eu insuffisance no de moyens charges. Ce fut le verdict ultime qui And a été retenu, en appel. Donc, the insuffisance des moyens à charge. Et also in cette with interprétation téléologique of the Vienna du statut on the law of est également tout à fait conforme à l'article 31 de la Convention de Vienne sur le droit des traités qui oblige statute les, la communauté internationale spirit, à interpréter le statut Now, we will conformément for this à son esprit, son why objectif et son, uh, son but. Alors nous allons vous expliquer pourquoi nous pensons que cela est le cas, pourquoi nous do pensons que cette chambre do, doit avoir le courage de faire ce que les États partis n'ont pas fait, First, à savoir l'application we'll d'une interprétation de l'article 85.3. Dans un premier temps, nous ferons valoir and que les circonstances de cette affaire s'inscrivent dans la Just took a few remarks from the trial chamber's judgment and are trying to relitigate trial issues. But to be the contrary is true. What the prosecution characterizes as merely remarks are specific references, legal findings of judges, which show that the conditions for a grave and manifest miscarriage of justice in terms of a wrongful prosecution is satisfied. Grave et manifeste it's sont the tout à fait in turn in its response to reopen the litigation. Donc c'est l'accusation so d'ailleurs à son tour lorsqu'elle répond euh, qui euh, rouvre le litige et qui va d'ailleurs même really jusqu'à interpréter ce que la majorité des juges was closed entendait véritablement alors euh, que le procès relatif ou bien fondé de cette affaire euh, s'est terminé lorsque la Chambre d'appel a rendu son arrêt et a confirmé l'acquittement 
l'avènement de M. Blé-Boubé. Donc, la, le procès Secondly, doit être conclu à un moment donné. Deuxièmement, nous, nous avançons some of the prosecution submissions with respect to its narrative investigation and the quality of evidence. Nous a, enfin, le, le, nous allons We may maintain our position, Madam President, that an appeal de of an acquittal à son récit, in which the prosecution cannot even de, uh, definitely de state whether it can retrial the acquitted la person la son is a frivolous uh, appeal. À savoir, uh, After nine years of investigation, you. Uh, au cours duquel, uh, Now, let us first look at the scope Of 83. de l'article to meet the strict requirements of 85 Our response, Madam President, respecter of course we are aware that the statute does not provide an automatic right to compensation for a criminal case. But this is not our argument. Our argument is that Mr. Legoudet was a victim of a wrongful prosecution in that the prosecution did not exercise due diligence when it turned a blind eye to the weakness of its case during the nine years investigation une, and subsequent prosecution appeal yeux, in the uh, case. Vis -vis de la faiblesse and de we all know what constitutes a wrongful prosecution. It has been defined by its court qui constitue and both the chambers in Unjolo and Bamba explicitly listed wrongful prosecution as an example of a manifest and grave miscarriage of justice without specifying what such a prosecution might entail. We agree with the prosecution's submission that Article 50.85.3 does not require a showing of malafides. The requirement of malafides was explicitly excluded during the draft history of 85.3. We are mindful of this, but this is not our argument. It means that the wrongful prosecution does not require malice on the part of the prosecution and should not be conflated with the tort or malicious prosecution found in common law systems. It is not the position of the defense that the prosecution acted with malice or ill intent. Therefore, the Prosecution submissions stating that we defense disregarded Judge Henderson's reasoning in which he held that any criticism did not impugn the integrity or good faith and commitment of the women and men who represented the prosecution's case. All those submissions are not relevant because we are not submitting this. It's our position that there was a systematic or systematic systemic failure nous, ce que nous to live justice in this case, a eu un which was not caused by the ill will of any individual affiliated with the prosecution, but rather it's the institution de, of the prosecution who, lacking due diligence, never objectively de, assessed the quality of the evidence qui it had gathered, and whether this evidence confirmed its case theory regarding Mr. Charles Charles Blake qui ne s'est jamais demandé si ces éléments de preuve confirmaient sa théorie relative à M. Charles Blake ce qui constitue une poursuite abusive. Alors, il faut savoir, Mme la Présidente, que la faiblesse exceptionnelle des éléments de preuve recueillis par le procureur aurait dû être autant d'avertissements pour le procureur au début de son enquête, notamment précisément dans le find a more favorable country to investigate those nine years in, given it was headed by the political opponents of Mr. Charles Blegoudet and Mr. Bagbo. However, the prosecution never discontinued its case. Throughout the proceedings, the prosecution perceived the criminal prosecution of Charles Blegoudet as a sporting match to employ a term used by the Appeals Council at the appellate hearing on the 20 June 2010. 
utilisé, ou les termes utilisés par le Conseil en appel lors de l'audience le 20 juin. Le sporting match qui a besoin de gagner. And it needed just to go through it to get through all the procedural hoops. Sport, un match sportif, it make, to make it happen. To first get an arrest warrant, faire, then the confirmation decision, de and then next temps, to ensuite, conquer the no case to answer motion. Et puis ensuite, la However, in this, the issue, no, at no point in time, it objectively considered whether it would have gathered sufficient probative evidence si to prove Mr. Blakeley's guilt beyond reasonable doubt. Preuve, uh, Even on appeal, uh, the President, the prosecution could not state de whether it would be able to retry Mr. Blakeley and prove his guilt. Nor did the prosecution pu, uh, show, ever try to show, de on appeal, advancing just two procedural alleged errors in appeal, de démontrer en appel que toute chambre de première It instance raisonnable aurait condamné M. Blégoudé n'a jamais the essayé de considérer les erreurs alléguées et le fait de n'avoir pas démontré qu'en appel on appelle une chambre de première instance raisonnable aurait condamné M. Blégoudé a été déplorée par M. Blégoudé dans son opinion. While the prosecution emphasizes the very strict requirements of 85.3, it's important to stress the raison d'être of this provision. In the BEMBA, the court found the existence of this provision to be, I quote, for that decision is grounded in the belief that there is an inherent unfairness when an innocent person has spent time in prison. Une injustice inhérente some lorsqu'une personne a passé une certaine période en prison et euh, qu'une forme de réparation est due et que euh, cela est une question chamber de two justice in the is further emphasized that article 85.3 marks a step forward a qui plus est souligné que l'article 85.3 représente un progrès par rapport à la portée des the droits of qui euh, euh, sont relatifs à ceux qui ont été touchés de façon négative pour l'opération du droit pénal international et ces tribunaux et pour prendre les termes d'un érudit cité dans le BEMBA, cette décision est où il s'agit du texte le plus évolué en matière de protection de droits d'indemnisation, même lorsque cela est comparé aux dispositions des conventions internationales sur pour les droits de l'homme. Et j'espère, j'espère que... Inequivocally found that both Judge Henderson and Judge Tafusser, sans équivoque, I quote, que shared the view Anderson that the evidence was exceptional weak, et je cite, and that the fundamental flaw of the prosecution case lay in the numerous divergences between the prosecution one-sided narrative and the facts emerging from her own evidence, unquote. And you find this in paragraph 328, also in the appeals judgment. Moreover, the appeals chamber emphasized that the prosecution arguments, mainly based on two just procedural appeal grounds, not on the merits, if accepted, did not demonstrate, according to the majority of the appeals chamber, that the trial chamber would not have acquitted Mr. Blegoudet had it not made the alleged errors on appeal. Si elle n'avait pas Paragraph fait des erreurs alléguées en judgment. appel. Paragraphe 374 de l'arrêt. Donc euh, voilà. Voilà Prosecution admits that the defense inappropriately places an obligation of result on the prosecution. But even this is not our case. Une obligation de résultat et ce de façon inappropriée. This was not a typical case of just weak evidence. Mais ce n'est pas le cas. 
Euh, that resulted in this early Il ne s'agit pas d'une affaire typique euh, This was a case de, where the appeals chamber emphasized that the trial chamber euh, found the evidence to be exceptionally weak. Il affaire au cours de laquelle And la one chambre d'appel a insisté sur le fait que la the chambre were critical on the prosecution on the prosecution's case. Faiblesse exceptionnelle also et accepted nous avons by the appeals chamber in paragraph euh, euh, à l'égard de la thèse de l'accusation. This was also an appeal where the prosecution made no arguments de, de on the merits et, et c'est également agi d'un appel où le procureur n'a présenté aucun argument relatif charged, au bien fondé de l'absence d'un lien entre M. Boudet et les crimes reprochés, comme cela a été Therefore, euh, Mr. observé Mr. President, au unlike paragraphe 374 de la majorité decision, des juges de la Chambre d'appel. No circumstances of such gravity as to make it plausible or necessary to consider that such a miscarriage of justice might have indeed occurred. Here, in the case of Charles Blegoudet, these circumstances do exist derived from both trial chamber and appeals judgments. What the prosecutor refers to as being merely Remarks by Judge Henderson and Justice Le procureur uh, fait President. référence à certaines remarques These du juge are specific Anderson references and Tarfusser. legal findings et ces remarques from sont an des article 74 trial judgment et des that was not to be confirmed on appeal. Now, yes, judicata, which showed definitely that article 84 was met. Uh, et the fact that Judge Carbuccia descended que, uh, from the majority or that Two judges descended from the appeals judgment is irrelevant and impermissible to rely on in this compensation procedure par rapport à under the jurisprudence uh, of the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, it pas autorisé de ce It would amount to a violation of the presumption of evidence, presumption of innocence, sorry, and enshrined in Article 6, Section 2 d'innocence, tel que euh, cela est indiqué à l'article 6.2 de If la euh, Convention européenne des droits de l'homme, car si, lorsque opinions. vous avez une procédure d'indemnisation, dans l'affaire de l'Union européenne des droits de l'homme, nous avons la Cour européenne des droits de l'homme dans son Paragraph jugement 30, du 25 août ou du 24 août 1993 au paragraphe 30 dont 30 a euh, indiqué, déclaré the voicing of suspicions regarding an excuse innocence is conceivable as long as the conclusion of the criminal proceedings has not resulted in a decision on the merits of the accusation. However, it's no longer admissible to rely on such suspicions Toutefois, on once an acquittal has become final. Droit sur de tels soupçons even the mere suggestion, end of quote, sorry, end of quote, even the mere suggestion, just to Madam President, of guilt Donc, is impermissible to rely on after an acquittal, de acquittal has become final under Donc, the same jurisprudence of the European Court. I refer to the judgment of 11 February 2003 in the case of O versus Norway, paragraph 39, where the judges of the European Court held that even the mere inference to guilt is in this regard and it concerns The education of a compensation request after acquittal impermissible. Pas être pris en Mind you, Madam President, Your Honours, that the Sekanina case I just mentioned is especially instructive dirai, in these proceedings of Charles Blegoudet, since Austria does not provide an automatic uh, right to compensation uh, to acquitted uh, persons, car like ne Article 85.3, and therefore its provisions resemble. Article 85.3. Therefore, any reference to the dissenting opinions in this case should be disregarded and be seen as a reversal of the burden of proof, effectively making Charles Blegoudet to prove again that he is innocent. 
But in President, moreover, the prosecution reliance on the confirmation decision in this case, in which all three judges confirmed charges, we all know this, blatantly ignores the defense's submission on this very point. I refer, Your Honours, to paragraph 12 for our request. The prosecution never responded in this regard to our argument, which was the following. Yes, pre-trial chamber 2 did confirm the charges, but it did so under the assumption, Madam President, under the assumption that the prosecution would, at trial, present evidence capable of proving guilt beyond reasonable doubt. That was the assumption of the confirmation decision. At that time, the judges of the confirmation chamber had no clue about what happened during trial. The prosecution never assessed whether its narrative would hold up in court and even tried to beat the defense at the no case to answer stage by requesting the chamber to provide guidance on the test that would apply to the no case to answer motion. The prosecution should not have treated this case as a sportive game. As the appeals chamber put it in paragraph 347, Madam President, I quote, the prosecution was and is at all times aware that she is required to prove her case beyond a reasonable doubt credible uh, evidence. And of course, these words fait, were uh, written uh, not without uh, reason uh, by the majority. De Therefore, des, why did the prosecution not adjust its narrative Donc, so as to reflect the reality of the Côte d'Ivoire situation and Mr. Belégoudet's alleged role? The prosecution ever provided the chamber with any answer to this question. Mr. Belégoudet was held in prison for nearly five years and even after his acquittal, Donc, uh, he remains subject to restrictions on his liberty and rights and continues to suffer from them to this very day, nearly eight years after he was brought to the seat of this court. Does therefore this acquittal remedy the harm he has suffered? Devant le siège no, de cette cour. Donc, est-ce que cet acquittement répare le préjudice so dont il a souffert Non. Vous avez lu notre requête. Much human Donc, suffering uh, and could tant d'années passées en prison have been completely avoided had the prosecution acted diligently and dropped the case in its early stages. Le procureur avait As recalled by the Bemba pre-trial chamber, affaire, the right to an effective remedy undoubtedly forms part of customary international law. It recalled the Rama Kuba ICTR case, where the Chamber found, you can find it in paragraph 15, 50 of the Bemba compensation decision, I quote, its inherent power to give effect to an accused or former accused right to effective remedy encompasses the power to grant financial compensation where, in the specific circumstances of the case, it constitutes the appropriate remedy to regress the violation of human rights in question. Affaire, cela constitue quote. le recours Madame President, pour réparer Honours, une violation granting du droit Mr. Article 85 3 request Donc, does faire droit constitute in this à la situation a proper remedy en vertu de to redress the violation of his right to liberty and the right to speedy trial. Like the Rwanda tribunal et la violation de statute, droit the ICTR statute, rapide, where there is no provision to be found governing compensation of acquitted persons, du TPIR, où the ICC, il a pas de as we know, has such a provision. Des personnes acquittées, and while we do not savons, submit that CPI the prosecution acted maliciously, it undoubtedly showed a complete disregard for Mr. Belégoudet's rights to liberty, producing the one-sided narrative du droit de that never squared liberté, with his own evidence as observed by Judge Henderson un récit and Judge Safosa. This concludes the submissions on the scope and the applicability of 85.3, and now we briefly address some of the specific submissions of the prosecution written 
First of all, you allege that it has met its 54 obligations and that it had collected a substantial body of evidence, rather documentary or testimonial, including exonerating information. Our answer, Mr. Madam President, this is an irrelevant argument for these proceedings. Could you, um, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Kurtz, could you refer us to the paragraphs of the prosecution's response in your dealing with them? Excuse me, Mr. Kurtz, could you give us the paragraph of the response of the prosecutor? First argument, the substantial body of evidence prosecutor says we have met our 54 uh, Section 1A obligations in that we collected substantial body of evidence is to be found in the prosecution written submissions Donc, paragraph 17 till 21. Dit, uh, le, le fait, alors. Our answer, this might be, but it's not relevant for and not decisive for the case at hand. The prosecution is not discharged of its investigative obligations under 54 by merely collecting and disclosing incriminating and exonerating evidence, however voluminous it might be. Il faut savoir que même si ces éléments de recherche et des charges sont extrêmement volumineux, and that's to be found in paragraph 17 of its response. No, Madam President, Your Honours, the prosecution has also an obligation to extend its investigation to include evidence that might be relevant to the case. No, Madam President, Your Honours, the prosecution has also an obligation to extend its investigation to include evidence that might be relevant to the case. No, Madam President, Your Honours, the prosecution has also an obligation to extend its investigation to include evidence that might be relevant to the case. No, Madam President, Your Honours, the prosecution has also an obligation to extend its investigation to include evidence that might be relevant to the case. No, Madam President, Your Honours, the prosecution has also an obligation to extend its investigation to include evidence that might be relevant to the case. No, Madam President, Your Honours, the prosecution has also an obligation to extend its investigation to include evidence that might be relevant to the case. No, Madam President, Your Honours, the prosecution has also an obligation to extend its investigation to include evidence that might be relevant to the case. No, Madam President, Your Honours, the prosecution has also an obligation to extend its investigation to include evidence that might be relevant to the case. No, Madam President, Your so that once the prosecution determines to, to proceed with its case, Donc, uh, the relevant chamber of parties can get a clear indication that the case has substance de, de uh, les chambres, la and et les are able to assess holistically the evidence. It is this holistic assessment that the defense, as we submit, was not appropriately completed by the prosecution. The prosecution lacked due diligence in refusing in two ways. First, to attach the required significance to the weak, exceptional weak, contradictory and exonerating evidence, had collected and more generally, second, draw the obvious conclusions from the evidence which the trial chamber ultimately did in its no case to answer judgment, namely, that this case real was flawed, as pointed out by Judge Henderson in his reasons, and you can find it in paragraph 90, 90 of Judge Henderson's reasons, I quote, the prosecution should not be allowed to hide behind large volumes of submitted evidence and an indeterminate system of evidence to avoid scrutiny of her case. And of course, Madam President, we never alleged that the evidence was withheld, that any evidence was withheld as the prosecution mistakenly advances in its response in paragraph 24. We allege that the evaluation of the information collected, however considerable and complex it was, should have led the prosecution to conclude, in light of its duty to establish the truth, that the office would never be able to show guilt beyond the reasonable doubt under Article 66 of the statute. In light of this, the fact that the prosecution sought to interview Mr. Blair Goudet regarding the allegations against against him is also, with all due respect, totally Alors, not relevant. Apart from the suspect having the right to remain silent, we presented in detail in our opening statement the views of Charles Blegoudet, which reflected also his own statement. With respect to the narrative of the prosecution, 
se trouvait également dans cette déclaration. Judge Henderson Tenez did acknowledge you got that the prosecution de, case euh, du was prima facie plausible. Que la thèse you can find it in the prosecution response paragraph 25. Indeed, that was the observation of Judge Henderson de la in the majority reasons. But ce fut effectivement Judge Henderson said something different de in le addition juge to that. Anderson, uh, mais in his preliminary Anderson statement, he emphasized that upon scrutiny, Dans sa déclaration the prosecution systematically omitted or downplayed examen, significant factual elements which resulted omis, omis in a highly misleading and somewhat skewed version qui, uh, of the events. Which did not reflect the reality of the case. Paragraph 66 of Judge Henderson's reasons. It was not merely a difference of interpretation of the evidence between the feds and prosecution. As the prosecution suggests, no. Rather, there was a fundamental divergence between the prosecution one-sided narrative and the facts emerging from its own evidence. As observed by Judge Henderson's reasons in paragraph 1 and 2038, comme dans and in Judge Tafus's opinion in the paragraph 68, 74 and 12. It was actually on the basis of this fundamental flaw of the prosecution case that the trial chamber 1 dismissed the case halfway through the proceedings. It's important to emphasize to this chamber, Madam President, that the appeals chamber affirmed that both judges in the majority believed that the prosecution one-sided narrative was manifestly unsupported by the evidence. Paragraph 340 of the and paragraph 317 and paragraph 328 till 330 of the appeals majority judgment, Madam President. Jusqu'au paragraphe 330 du de l'arrêt de la majorité. The majority in the appeals chamber also accepted that the prosecution evidence against Donc, la majorité the appellant, Mr. Chalbrigoudet, was to be qualified not only weak but exceptionally weak. Monsieur Charles and this exceptionally weak, this was of great significance de as the majority ruled when applying any test of sufficiency. Cette faiblesse exceptionnelle revêt une importance considérable dans le contexte de l'application de toute l'appréciation du caractère suffisant des preuves. To rely on as a matter of res judicata. The prosecution argument on documentary evidence and receipts is also not relevant. The defense in its request was not merely disagreeing with the prosecution exercise of its discretion in the presentation of the evidence. No, we highlighted the implausibility of the prosecution narrative when faced with the lack of evidence to support it. And secondly, its failure to comply with its obligation to generally search for the truth by omitting to progressively adjust its narrative to the insufficient evidence presented at trial. The prosecution further alleged that we impermissibly re-litigate the trial issues again, such as the authenticity of documents and the use of anonymous hearsay. Et que la défense essaie de revenir sur des questions déjà abordées pour un procès tel que l'authenticité des documents et le recours from the truth. To the contrary, we are not asking this chamber to reassess whether the prosecution failed to establish the authenticity of documents. The reason why we are not asking this is that these are matters of res judicata. The prosecution is, to the contrary, reopening the debate, requesting this chamber to look back in the evidence to assess how certain witnesses authenticate documents, etc. We, on the other hand, are simply asking this chamber to take the conclusive findings of the trial chamber and the appeal chamber into consideration in the context of this request. It's therefore also completely irrelevant that the prosecution 
provided the Chamber with investigation reports or that it tried to establish the authenticity of some documents at trial, as it suggested in its response, paragraph 32 and 33. The prostitution is part of the judicial system and is a gatekeeper within that system. And in this vein, these arguments, therefore, cannot foreclose this chamber Ces arguments ne peuvent donc, for accepting the acquittal. It's also totally irrelevant that Judge Henderson's view that the authenticity of signatures could not be taken for granted might have been based on one insider witness, as the prosecution suggests in its response, paragraph 34. Just Henderson identified not just one discrete problem affecting the documents. Un problème but he identified pervasive mais authenticity a problems affecting a considerable number of documents in its reasons, paragraph 36. In his view, I quote, a majority of documents exhibits that were submitted by the prosecution would not pass even the most rudimentary admissibility test in many domestic systems, paragraph 36 of his reasons. And in the same paragraph, Judge Henderson does say that this is especially true in a case like here, Que cela est particulièrement vrai where much of the evidence was essentially provided by the current government, which was headed by political opponents of the accused. Actuel, Indeed, under these circumstances, as Judge Henderson mentions, the Chamber would have expected the prosecution to take further steps to ensure that important documentary evidence was properly and demonstrably authenticated before being submitted to the court. Now, regarding the judge's conclusions of the trial chamber, one, on the inappropriate use of anonymous hearsay during the proceedings, we didn't dis mischaracterize Judge Henderson's findings. He did seriously question and criticize the prosecution choice of using anonymous evidence, anonymous hearsay evidence, on such a considerable proportion of evidence that he explained that this so-called relaxed approach to be found in paragraph 43 of his reasons had a direct and very impact consequence for the case because it made the chamber for the chamber possible to ascribe any probative value to the evidence in question. Just Henderson gave countless examples, Madam President, throughout his reasonings of evidence based on anonymous hearsay, which was either uncorroborated or corroborated just by hearsay and could therefore not be relied on. The prosecution failed to act appropriately in refusing to attach more significant significance to the very problematic fact that its case was based largely on hearsay and anonymous hearsay. For sure, this should have put the prosecution on notice that its case was too weak to sustain the conviction. And you find the countless examples of Judge Henderson's uh, observations in the paragraphs 608, 622, 653, 665, 713, 749, 909, and 915, etc. motif du juge Henderson, Madam President, the prosecution um, also overlooks the fact that the Maître également pas tenu compte du fait Council Vous êtes en train de prendre sur you are sur le temps de parole de ceux qui vont vous suivre speaking time Vous avez déjà parlé pendant plus de 45 minutes. Est-ce que vous pouvez vous résumer un peu? So can you kindly speed up or summarize? Thank you, Madam President. Um, thank you, Madam President. 
Maître Clouse, merci Madame la Présidente. The, uh... Please go ahead. Please go ahead. I can see. Je vois, je vois I can see certain euh, people certaines from your personnes de votre team équipe qui hausse de la tête. Euh, mais moi, je pense que vous avez déjà utilisé le temps. Vous avez déjà utilisé le temps. Vous pouvez y aller. Uh, ahead, uh, of, uh, Et vous résumez. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Mme la Présidente. Merci. Mme Kloos, merci, Mme la Présidente. Merci infiniment. I would like to point, Ms. Madam President, that in the um, judgment of Bien, the trial chamber one, the judges le acknowledged de la that de indeed instance, the prosecution narrative was que, en fait, confined to one narrative and not two. And I refer the uh, chamber to the second order of the trial chamber of 8 June 2018, where the judges unanimously, including Judge Sarkozy, uh, noted that notwithstanding so minor changes in respect of a limited number of allegations, the overall narrative of the trial brief, which was ordered by the Chamber, remained essentially the same as the one mirrored in the pre-trial brief. It's therefore not correct to state that the changes which were apparently ordered by the Chamber uh, related just to corrections and footnotes. The Chamber clearly ordered the prosecution to review its case and uh, in its second order observed that despite the filing of uh, the trial brief, the theory of the prosecution effectively did not uh, change. The second point is that the order, procedure order, is quite important in this case. The prosecution only during the NCTA proceedings, no case to end proceedings, was willing to uh, withdraw some of the charges. While in, uh, and that was in September 2018, while the chamber in its order, and that was the order which the chamber gave in uh, March, asked the prosecution to file a trial brief and reframe its narrative by taking into consideration the testimonies heard and the documentary evidence submitted at the trial. It is to be found in paragraph 10 of the first trial brief order. Notwithstanding this order, the prosecution continued with its narrative and only after the NCTA motion was introduced by the defense, the prosecution was willing to amend, in a way, the charges by dropping two charges, the third and the fourth incident. And therefore, also this is a clear example that the prosecution was staying on to its theory as long as possible. Um, finally, Ms. Madam President, the appeals proceedings, uh, very briefly to illustrate that indeed there was a one-sided narrative and never a two-sided narrative, you will find in the appeals proceedings that the prosecution was not in the position to inform the chamber whether it was willing and able to retry the case. The dissenting, even the two dissenting judges, Judge Ibanez and Judge Bossa, observed in it their dissenting opinions that it remained unclear throughout the appellate proceedings what precisely the prosecution considered the procedural effect of such a declaration of a mistrial would be. It was the initial request in appeal, a mistrial, um, but even the dissenting judges observed that the mistrial cannot be part parcel of an appeal proceedings before 
la suffisance de moyens à charge, mais même les juges décidant d'observer que l'insuffisance de moyens à charge est en partie dans le cadre des procédures de la CPI. La position non claire de l'accusation concernant la mesure demandée était claire dans l'audience de l'appel le 26 juin 250. Le chambre est libre de faire ça, l'appel chambre. Pourraient-ils considérer que c'est le remède le plus correct a few minutes later, at the same hearing, the counsel for the prostitution stated that now to confirm the prostitution's present intention is to hold retrial should her appeal succeed. You can find this in the transcript, page number 240, page 28, lines 15 till 18. Counsel, you are taking up the speaking time of your client. You are currently taking your client's speaking time. And that of the defender as well. Madam President, is it my understanding that the speaking time for Mr. Bleboudet is in addition to the speaking time we were granted. I am aware that I have taken more time than if that's the case, I will conclude. And that's exactly what we said at the start. When we were presenting the case, we gave you 45 minutes, and at your request, and request of Mr. Begoudet, we also accorded five minutes to him. So, in a general way, on your side, you have 50 minutes. Thank you. 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 Madame la Présidente, la Chambre to acknowledge that the raison d'être of Article 85 is met and if this would be acknowledged by your Chamber by granting this request it would make Article 85 not redundant not an empty shell and it would encourage the institution of the prostitution not to continue to bring exceptional weak cases to this chamber. Thank you. Mr. Krebs, before you sit down, I have a question which will not deduct from your counsel. Mr. Knox, that is the judge who would like to put a question to you before continuing. Of course. Sorry, I started before you would speak. Um, Mr. Krebs, I, I just have one question for you. Um, in the course of what could be said to be highly emotional, uh, not to say emotive language used in your um, application for compensation from about paragraphs 25 onwards, um, you divide the periods for which you request compensation into three. Um, and effectively, um, it's not so clear fait, from the redacted public version, but you are saying that there is a second period which begins from the 1st of February 2019 until the 31st of March 2021. And you, again, you've repeated that even though he's been released with conditions, he's still not free. And that is the basis of your application, is it not, for compensation for these periods? And what I'd simply like to know is this. Do you not consider that by failing to mention in your application, or indeed at any stage during your oral submissions, that effectively your client cannot go back to the Côte d'Ivoire, because if he does, he's going to be serving 20 years in prison, which passed, and I understand it, December 2019. You could be said to be misleading the court, if by omission, if nothing else. I understand your question, Madam Corner. 
Maître um, Knoops, je comprends votre question, madame. First of all, um, it's a very intriguing question. First of all, Tout um, Mr. Blake Goudé. Très uh, intéressant. Monsieur Blake Goudé. Of course, didn't waive his right to liberty. Pas the prosecution suggests son droit by accepting à la liberté, the restrictions comme le laisse entendre l'accusation en acceptant I think the, 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 the court is, is well aware that's my first observation with the decision of Bujadje versus Moldova in the European Court of Human Rights Court et ceci dans la décision where this exactly was the same problem contre Moldavia dans defendant la, agreeing la cour de, sur, dans la, à la cour des droits de l'homme le défendeur, arrest, le défendeur était d'accord, en acceptant donc. Et le Conseil européen a dit que c'était une question de juris. Donc, le fait qu'il n'avait pas d'autre choix. La Cour européenne a dit qu'il s'agissait d'une question de contrat. Et le fait que M. Blegoudé ait tout d'abord accepté les conditions ici, c'est quelque chose d'important. Votre question est... De première instance et de la chambre d'appel est quelque chose d'important. Directed to you, Mr. Knups, not to your client. My question is, do you not think that you should have mentioned in your application for compensation, particularly for that period, that one of the reasons that your client cannot go back to the Côte d'Ivoire, or presumably does not wish to go back to the Côte d'Ivoire, is because he's been sentenced for 20 years in his absence. And therefore, remaining in Holland, and this is probably a positive et que de plus. ce fait, rester en Hollande est probablement un Now avantage. Now I understand your question, Ms. Corner. Thank you. Uh, merci, no. merci, Maître merci. Je Thank you. Question, Thank you, Judge. Corner. Now, I think that the Chamber Je crois que le, has la Chambre avisera sur cette question. Nous aviserons sur cette question. Si... Uh, uh, même Even déjà, if uh, Mr. Knobs uh, uh, is not uh, able to give us a satisfactory response, but this is a point uh, which we will come to at the appropriate time. We will give notification. Mr. Um, uh, just uh, Mr. one sentence. Uh, really, it is uh, yeah. either yes or no. You don't consider it or you do consider it to be misleading. Just no, uh, on the judge's corner, oui I don't think it's misleading. Que cela um, est trop peur, bearing in mind that Mr. Blegoudé does non, want to go back Cornard, across the trial with all due respect in Côte d'Ivoire, we don't have the time to go in. It was a farce. And he can receive a retrial. De, so he is adamant to go back. Mais était également, so it's not a positive thing that he Donc, il can remain for now in the Netherlands. Thank you so much. Pour lui rester ici pour Merci beaucoup. L'honorable juge. Honorable judge, you don't wish to. No. In okay. which case, Donc, have you finished, vous pouvez, uh, counsel? Vous avez fini, have maître? you concluded, counsel? Vous avez conclu? Have you concluded? Vous avez conclu? The president, thank okay. you. Very well. Yes, Madam President. Maître Cruz, oui, Madame la Présidente. So your client can therefore have Laissez the five minute minutes accorded client. to him. Pourrions-nous accorder les cinq minutes? So Ou should we accord the five minutes to your client? client? Déjà tout dit en... Or have you said Bien, everything in his state? I think, Madam President, it would be uh, instructive for the Chamber to President listen five be minutes to Mr. Mr. Blake today because of the uh, well, personal address. Exactly. 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 That's what we thought. But I wanted to have exchanges in the right procedure, and we cannot go beyond the five allocated minutes. La parole. He has the floor. Vous avez cinq minutes, s'il vous plaît. You have five minutes. Vous avez cinq minutes, s'il vous plaît. Thank you. Merci, madame. I'm just waiting for the lecture to be provided to me.
Tu avais la parole You have the floor. Tu avais la parole D'accord. Honorable juge. Honorable judge. Honorable juge. Ladies and gentlemen. Mesdames et messieurs de la cour. I am Charles Blegoudé. Je suis Charles Blegoudé. I greet you Je vous salue with avec déférence. I'm Je suis natif de Guibérois. From Côte d'Ivoire. La Côte d'Ivoire est mon pays. And Africa is my continent. Mon continent. Le droit est mon socle. Law et la loi is mon dossier. Honorable judges. Honorable juge. For myself, moi, I do not know the je ne connais pas le juge qui m'a quitté en premier instant. Just as Tout I comme also je ne connais pas non plus those ceux qui ont confirmé définitivement my mon acquittement en appel. Appeal. Only law Seule la loi m'a sorti de prison. Et this, to c'est à cette loi that I would like to have que je voulais avoir recours cet après-midi devant vous pour demander for reparations. And why? Pourquoi After eight years, huit ans, eight years huit ans de ma vie m'ont été arrachés, which was eaten up, m'ont été mangés. It was taken from me. I Je n'ai pas say dit eight days. huit jours. I didn't Je n'ai pas dit eight weeks. huit semaines. I didn't Je n'ai pas dit months. huit mois. I am speaking Je of parle de huit longues années long de privation, de traumatisme, de désocialisation. Eight years that huit ans I was presented que j'ai été présenté au monde entier comme un criminel. Eight years of trauma. Your honors. Mesdames et messieurs les juges, as you know, comme vous le savez, I was arrested j'ai in été Ghana. arrêté au Ghana. Without even Sans même qu'on me présente un avocat. Lawyer. J'ai été extradé nuitement en Côte d'Ivoire. Je dis bien nuitement. Execute en exécution du mandat d'arrêt. J'ai été détenu 14 mois sans voir ni le jour ni le soleil. Execution of en exécution du mandat d'arrêt. J'ai été transféré en 2004 en exécution of the du mandat d'arrêt. And for six years, Pendant six ans, I was subject to proceedings here. Ici même. There was the work of my lawyer, and avocats, thanks to that, I was acquitted. Acquitté. But during all these Pendant years, you années, can imagine, madam, vous imaginez, madame, honorable juge, judges, that my children que mes enfants flee. ont dû fuir. They had to les regards de leurs camarades à l'école. Parce que eux étaient les enfants d'un criminel. They were the children of a criminal. Ces enfants traumatisés. They grew up without qui ont grandi their sans leur père que je suis and et qui ne savent dire que maman had to say, Mommy, parce que papa n'était pas là parce que papa n'a jamais été là parce que papa ne either. pouvait pas être là Your honors, Mesdames et Messieurs le juge that was a cela a été un moment difficile pour moi et pour mes proches family. And when I was acquitted, et lorsque j'ai été acquitté I was happy. j'étais heureux Because Parce que pour me, moi, it was the c'était end la fin of this Calvary. Oh, que je me But suis de ma trompe. made a major mistake. Mon the Calvary, Calvary continues and it continues to continue this long. very day. While the ICC Alors que la CPI a eu les moyens, authority, l'autorité, power, le pouvoir d'enclencher la clause de coopération qui la lie à mon pays, Ivoire, la Côte d'Ivoire, coopération, coopération au nom de laquelle un avion a été affrété spécialement pour me transférer à la CPI, me faire voyager sans visa, sans passeport, depuis mon acquittement, malheureusement, la CPI, la même, ne peut plus en- en- enclencher la clause de coopération, ne serait-ce que par paralysme des formes pour m'obtenir, ne serait-ce que un passeport. Un passeport que j'attends. And I've been waiting it for 11 months, six to obtain mois pour obtenir un rendez-vous. And Ensuite, now depuis le 16 I'm awaiting je suis en attente my passport. De mon passeport. That is to say Autant that I'm currently que je suis en train de perdre my Ivorian ma citoyenneté ivoirienne. And Et le citoyen Blegoudé est désormais devenu un apatrite. But if the Mais ICC si la CPI peut arrêter, somebody, peut transférer, somebody, peut transporter, can try and peut juger, peut condamner si quelqu'un est coupable, elle peut aussi libérer 
It can rehabilitate somebody. It can re-establish their lives. Your Honours, that is what I would like to put to you. Not necessarily to ask for money, because the harm that I have suffered que j'ai subi représente far représentera more toujours plus money. que l'âge. It is my dignity, C'est ma dignité. My image. Mon image. That ma has been destroyed. Que été Question. Mr. Blegoudé, could you conclude? Madame Judge. Madame le juge. Can you hear me, Mr. Blegoudé? Yes, I can hear you. Oui, This entendu. is taking time. Ça nous prend du and temps. Et do you trust your counsel? Indeed. I'm going to conclude, therefore, je vais conclure, Madame donc, Judge, Madame le juge, to say that pour vous dire Here, que in Holland, ici, what en Hollande, c'est que mon conseil n'a pas dit. Said, I can't even Je ne peux même pas avoir accès à un service public. Even the vaccine, même the le vaccin vaccine de la COVID-19, for which everybody is pour lequel on encourage tout le monde à le faire, I cannot even Madame, have access je ne peux même pas avoir accès à ce vaccin. I am before you. And I vous. ask et je for des reparations and compensation for all that. And I believe et you have the power, le pouvoir, you have the authority to take me to Côte d'Ivoire in a safe place, in a safe place, that was indicated, that indicated by the appeal indiqué chamber, par la such that I can rebuild my life, rebuild myself, and take my activities again, and enjoy my normal life. Because I was acquitted, my trial was acquitted, and 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 my Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. We take good note Nous prenons acte que votre question n'est pas is not surtout above all celui about de, money, de l'argent, mais about dignity. De, une question Indeed. de dignité. Tout à fait, mm. et okay. la reconnaissance morale va That entraîner goes. certainement une the reconnaissance financière. Ah bon. ah oui. reparations as well. J'aime, j'aime, j'aime well. autant vous entendre dire cela, parce que j'ai retenu que votre question n'est pas une question financière, mais une question de dignité. Merci beaucoup. 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 Thank you, thank you. You're welcome, merci, madam. Merci. Je vous en prie, madame. Oui. Can I give the floor? Euh, est-ce que je peux donner, donner la parole? Give the floor to je the peux donner la parole uh, à monsieur le procureur? You have the floor, vous avez la you parole, monsieur le procureur. Minutes. Vous avez 45 minutes. Pour uh, uh, madam President, your honor, I, I'm most grateful and bearing in mind um, the uh, injunction at the outset, uh, I don't intend to repeat what's in the response. I think that sets out with greatest of respect quite comprehensively uh, the proper answer as to why the prosecution say uh, the application of Mr. Blake Goudet should be dismissed. From what uh, Melinda Friend has said today and what Mr. Blake Goudet has her statement. Uh, it's clear that he's pleased to be acquitted, but unhappy to have been charged, uh, arrested, and detained. I, I can understand that. It's natural. Uh, but that's legally irrelevant. As a consideration as to the applic uh, applicability. Uh, of Article 85.3. Uh, this is a judgment, of course, that was strident in part in its language in areas of criticism regarding the office. Stinging criticism in part as well, I fully concede. Could the office of the prosecutor have done better? Of course, we can always do better. But that, similarly, is not the question. That similarly does not bring an unmeritorious case within the confines of Article 85.3. And the difficulty perhaps that my learned friend is grappling with is evidenced by his opening submission, praying in aid a teleological approach, emotively asking your honours to be courageous, as if your honours need any encouragement to do that, but courageous by doing that precisely precisely that which the Assembly of State Parties have uh, uh, declined to do. On the one hand, Melinda Friend says um, uh, that the Rome Statute regime uh, is the uh, most advanced uh, text in terms of uh, compensation. Um, I can agree with that. But again, Article 85.3, as the Bember jurisprudence and the Jolo jurisprudence make clear, 
sets out very deliberately a high threshold. It is of discretionary nature that the high threshold simply has not been made out in this particular case. My learned friend, Mr. James Stewart, will do the going to some more detail, but perhaps I can just very briefly. Uh, de façon address a few points. À ce sujet, mais the first très is the je very notable feature of this case, je that five judges, indeed six judges, of this international affaire, criminal court either de la cour pénale internationale uh, confirmed the case or, uh, in terms of the three judges of confirmation, at least in part, two judges completely on all counts, Judge Christine Wein Weingart in relation to three of the incidents, Judge Kabuchia uh, dissented, and two judges, of course, at the appellate level would have remitted the case back to retrial. Now, I simply don't concede for a moment that my learned friend's contortion in my submission of res judicata is appropriate. Uh, the, and I would ask you to look at uh, uh, the two European court cases that my learned friend has, uh, has prayed in aid, Owen Norway and uh, Sakhanina and Austria. This is not a case in which um, there is a smell of suspicion that is being cast upon uh, somebody who's de been declared not guilty. Uh, this is a case in which a learned friend who has the burden of proof has to establish grave and manifest miscarriage of justice has taken place. And to establish that conclusively, how is it other than extremely relevant to the appropriateness of the warrant being issued or the case being confirmed? That judges at different stages in issuing a warrant in confirming the case, in dissenting, and in uh, two judges that would, re would have remitted it, would have remitted the case back, were of a mind that the evidence disclosed something that required an answer. The fact that those judges spoke in the manner that they did is relevant to whether or not there's been a miscarriage of justice. In other words, whether or not this is a prosecution that should never have been brought. Your Honor, my learned friend largely glosses over those six judges and he says, in terms of respect to Judge, Judge Carbuccia, that her dissent was irrelevant, inconvenient, perhaps irrelevant, not a bit of it. There are those requirements of Article 85.3, exceptional circumstances, Alors, conclusive fact, and a grave and manifest miscarriage of justice cannot be airbrushed out by my learned friend with the litany of complaints and grievances uh, that he has put forward uh, in his submissions uh, and in today. The conjecture that is a feature of the written submissions and again today, for example, the assumptions as to what the confirmation, the judges of the pre-trial chamber were doing when they were issuing their confirmation decision is similarly revealing because it is a conclusion that counsel does not pray any, does not pray in aid any authority in support of that proposition. The judges were rather restricted to the requirements of the statute and whether or not the case should be confirmed. So again, when one looks at the uh, conjecture, Donc, une fois de plus, views as to why si things were done, one needs to do so with a lens of some circumspection uh, in my respectful submission. Faire, Your Honours, I don't intend to go into to more un, detail. Uh, the fact that two judges Alors, Madame, would have remitted the matter back 
dans un retrial, le fait que trois juges auraient souhaité que l'affaire soit jugée de nouveau, il y a une opinion dissidente d'un juge en première instance, il y a deux juges, trois juges qui ont confirmé l'affaire, le mandat d'arrêt a été délivré en bonne et due forme après demande de la procureure, tout cela sont autant de paramètres suffisants qui ne soulèvent aucun grief. Il faut l'acquittement, il faut savoir que l'acquittement non plus ne soulève pas de grief. Alors peut-être que mon estimé euh, confrère euh, ce serait that as compared with Mr. Bemba euh, à ce que la Chambre de Nijola. première instance euh, euh, conçoive une certaine euh, garantie de procédure. It, from whatever vantage Comparé point à M. Bemba ou M. Moudjolo, il n'a pas dû présenter de défense à l'accusé. Alors quel que soit l'optique retenue, quelle que soit la perspective adoptée, il n'y a pas eu d'erreur judiciaire. Mon estimé confrère ne s'est pas acquis Uh, we say uh, the du fardeau de la preuve qui était requis d'ailleurs par le statut. Et c'est pour cela que nous leave, vous indiquerons que la demande uh, doit être uh, rejetée. Mais avec votre aval, M. Stewart va présenter de plus amples détails à ce Je vous remercie, M. le procureur. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. M. Stewart, you have the floor. Microphone, s'il vous plaît. Microphone pour M. Stewart, s'il vous plaît. M. Stewart, c'est le micro. Nous allons faire la même chose. Madame la Présidente, Your Honours, Madame la Présidente, Madame la Présidente, je vais développer très rapidement ce que le procureur vient de présenter. Alors, je vais revenir sur un des aspects des arguments de M. Knops. Vous savez très bien que nous ne contestons pas le résultat. Nous avons accepté le résultat avec des différences. Je vous renvoie au paragraphe 9 de notre réponse. Ce n'est pas ça le problème pour nous. Mais la question dont est saisie la Chambre aujourd'hui, comme l'a indiqué Monsieur le Procureur, c'est qu'il s'agit de savoir si les circonstances exceptionnelles existent, qui serait telle que la Chambre conclurait qu'il a été la victime d'une erreur judiciaire grave et manifeste. Alors, notre réponse à nous, il faut savoir que, comme le procureur vient de l'indiquer, le seuil pour l'article 3553 est extrêmement élevé. Maître Knox a accepté et reconnu qu'il ne s'agit pas de malveillance. Donc, je suppose qu'il s'agit de faute lourde dans de l'administration de la justice. Et nous, ce que nous avançons, c'est que si l'on examine le dossier de cette affaire, on se rend compte que, quels que soient les critiques, quelles que soient les critiques qui peuvent être prononcées contre le bureau du procureur, il n'y a pas eu d'erreur judiciaire. In the end, Mr. Blegoudet benefited from the full panoply of rights afforded to the defense Blegoudet of any accused under the wrong statute. Parce que M. Blegoudet a finalement pu bénéficier de l'entière panoplie des droits accordés à un accusé conformément au statut de Rome. Mr. Blegoudet was acquitted of the charges of crimes against humanity that he faced. His rights were equally safeguarded on appeal. Monsieur Blegoudet a été acquitté. Ses droits, pardon, ont été garantis en appel, et la majorité de trois juges sur cinq juges a confirmé cet acquittement. Alors, pour répondre à la demande d'indemnisation de Monsieur Blegoudet, nous avons organisé ou articulé nos arguments autour de quatre volets centrales. De la procédure judiciaire, à savoir la situation au moment de l'audience de confirmation, le procès, notamment euh, l'insuffisance de, de moyens de charge, la libération de M. Boudet par la Chambre d'appel à partir de certaines conditions en attendant l'appel de l'ancien procureur, et puis l'appel contre son acquittement. Et nous pensons que ces quatre moments nous donnent la meilleure possibilité pour jauger si M. Boudet a bien présenté sa thèse pour pour son indemnisation. Alors, notre réponse à sa demande est développée et étoffée dans nos écritures. Je ne vais aborder que certains éléments saillants et euh, je vous renvoie donc à nos écritures pour ce qui est de, des calculs de M. Blegoudé au sujet de l'indemnisation qui est due d'après lui. Alors, si nous prenons euh, l'audience de confirmation, c'est bien entendu le moment où le procureur a déterminé ou quasiment terminé son enquête avec euh, communiquer les documents à la défense et décrire
décrit dans le document contenant les charges le plan de sa thèse contre le suspect. Alors bien sûr que l'accusation doit effectuer une enquête pour chercher and to do that, euh, les, les éléments de la charge 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 qui était pertinente à la défense et ses éléments de preuve émanaient de différentes sources, notamment des témoins que le procureur avait interrogé, qui avait fourni des éléments de preuve, et au sujet de la violence post-électorale en fonction de différentes perspectives. Ces éléments de preuve venaient également des documents d'archives que, que le procureur a examiné en Côte d'Ivoire. Donc, euh, le procureur pensait qu'il avait compris le contexte au moment, à ce moment-là, qu'il avait identifié les crimes commis pendant le conflit. Euh, euh, gravitant autour de cette élection présidentielle contestée en Côte d'Ivoire et a décrit, et a décrit ce qu'il pensait être le rôle joué par M. Blégoudet dans ces crimes. La thèse du procureur se fondait sur son évaluation de la globalité des éléments de preuve et de en considération les aspects à charge ainsi qu'à décharge. Et lorsque il a présenté euh, sa thèse contre M. Blégoudet dans le document contenant les charges et par la suite dans le mémoire pré euh, préliminaire, le procureur n'a pas omis de mentionner des facteurs pertinents pour la défense. In those circumstances, in our submission, it's very hard for Mr. Blegoudet now to claim that he was subjected to a wrongful prosecution. As a result of the prosecution investigation and the presentation of its case, he has been subjected to a wrongful prosecution. De, du procureur et de la présentation de sa thèse. J'en arrive maintenant brièvement au procès à proprement parler. Compensation Alors, l'argument qu'il présentait trial chamber, dans which, sa demande d'indemnisation, uh, c'est des arguments qu'il a déjà présentés devant la Chambre de première instance. Et d'ailleurs, la majorité de la Chambre de première instance a traché en sa faveur. C'est la raison pour laquelle nous pensons qu'il n'a rien à faire dans cette, dans cette demande. Ce que nous avançons, nous, c'est que M. Begoudet critique le procureur qui euh, n'a pas su établir l'authenticité euh, des documents, des documents et ce sont, euh, et ne prend pas en considération les efforts déployés par le procureur et forts qui ont été faits euh, en toute bonne foi lorsqu'il a examiné des cachets, des tampons officiels et des formats et lorsqu'il a évalué le contexte dans lequel les documents ont été trouvés. Nous pensons que, euh, que c'était tout à fait juste de procéder de la sorte. Le procureur a également essayé d'authentifier des documents par le truc de témoins au procès, notamment des témoins privilégiés de très haut niveau, qui ont authentifié de information nombreux documents about qui ont été montrés et il s'agit de mesures tout à fait raisonnables qui ont été prises notamment dans des circonstances où l'information relative aux auteurs des documents à la chaîne de conservation n'était plus disponible ou euh, qu'on ne pouvait plus obtenir. Et ce pas une situation qui est si in inhabituelle que cela addition, dans des procès En outre, se baser sur le n'est pas quelque chose d'inadmissible car que les éléments de preuve ne sont pas dénués de valeur. Et l'accusation n'a pas cherché à se baser sur cela uniquement pour prouver les faits matériels à l'encontre de M. Bléoudet. Elle a essayé d'utiliser ces éléments de preuve pour soutenir d'autres éléments de preuve dans l'affaire. Et le fait qu'elle n'ait pas réussi finalement dans certains cas ne signifie pas que l'accusation a agi de manière abusive ou de manière à aboutir à une erreur judiciaire manifeste et grave. Nous savons qu'il est l'impression que les arguments de la procu de, du procureur ont fait sur les esprits des juges qui ont entendu cette affaire. Mais nous, ce que nous disons, c'est que les commentaires faits par le juge Anderson, dont les points de vue reflétaient l'opinion de la majorité, parle de la conduite de l'accusation. 
and you have already en had this regardant to your avec du recul, il a dit Although this opinion is at times critical of the prosecutor, it's crucial to understand this criticism l'affaire The fact du procureur et non pas une personne qui représentait le bureau du procureur. Le fait que cette affaire ait abouti, débouché sur un acquittement est dû au fait que le procureur n'a pas présenté des éléments de preuve suffisants pour nous persuader qu'une chambre de première instance reverrait son nom comme accusé pour ces charges. Il se peut bien que certains d'entre nous soient d'avis et qu'ils auraient peut-être fait les choses de manière différente. Néanmoins, ceci ne conteste nullement la qualité, la bonne foi et l'engagement des hommes et des femmes qui représente le procureur dans cette affaire et dont le dur labeur et, et les efforts importants ne devraient pas être dénigrés parce que simplement cela n'a pas débouché sur une condamnation. Nous avançons que ces, ces, ces commentaires vont à l'encontre de la suggestion que M. Blegoudé aurait fait l'objet d'une erreur judiciaire. Judge Herrera Gabusia. Careful to frame her opinion in terms of what a reasonable trial team could find in the evidence, took a different view of the prosecution case and the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware of the evidence against Mr. Bigby. You're well aware
Mr. Blakeway faults the former de prosecutor for requesting his conditional release in light of her position Monsieur about Bigoudet a retrial. In our submission, however, there are three key reasons why his arguments fail to demonstrate a grave and manifest miscarriage of justice. Procès. First, Nous avançons qu'il a trois raisons in relation to the conditional release pour lesquelles son argumentation ne démontre pas qu'il y a eu une erreur de ju judiciaire grave et manifeste. Tout d'abord, concernant ses conditions de libération, the appeals chamber imposed les droits de Monsieur Blake ont été on Mr. Blakey's day following hearings. La Chambre d'appel a imposé des conditions à sa libération de Monsieur Blakey suite à des audiences. The reasons for judgment had not yet been released, and so the prosecutor was not in a position to be able to say precisely what shape her appeal would take. She was intending to appeal. If we go forward to May of 2020, when the appeals chamber renewed its conditional release order, following a hearing of Mr. Bagbo's request for reconsideration, it unanimously found no error or injustice. In the meantime, of course, there had been another hearing on, in February 2020 on the, the issue of conditional release. But in May of 2020, the appeals chamber unanimously found that there had been no error or injustice in the way in which uh, then accused uh, uh, or dont l'accusé uh, alors, qui avait été acquitté, of course, the appeals chamber on its own motion relaxed the conditions pending the outcome of the appeal. la chambre d'appel a, a assoupli les conditions. And when the appeals chamber, by a majority, ultimately upheld Mr. Lorsque la chambre d'appel, à la majorité, a confirmé l'acquittement de Monsieur Blegoudé, toutes les conditions de libération imposées par la Cour ont été levées. Mr. Blegoudé thus received a fair adjudication of his conditional release throughout the appeal proceedings. Nous avançons que Monsieur Blegoudé a donc fait l'objet d'une décision équitable concernant les conditions de sa libération tout au long de la procédure. The former prosecutor's position on conditional release before the appeals chamber has conveyed through counsel is both reasonable and transparent. Sur la libération conditionnelle devant la chambre d'appel est relayée telle que relayée par Monsieur. In January and February 2019, as I've said, when she first sought Mr. Blegoudet's release on conditions, she was not in a position to specify exactly what remedy she would seek. And of course, sous condition, elle ne pouvait d'abord savoir exactement quel serait le recours qu'elle demanderait. Et à l'époque, à ce moment-là. She was anxious, of course, to preserve her statutory right of appeal and any remedy that she could see. By February of 2020, of course, the second hearing on release, the trial chamber's written decision, reasons had been released, I should say, reasons had been released, and the appeal had been briefed. And at the hearing, the prosecution confirmed, if successful on appeal, she was seeking the remedy of reversal and mistrial. Through counsel, the former prosecutor further explained if this remedy were granted, she intended to retry Mr. Blakeley, but her final decision, including on the exact scope of the trial, would depend on the appeal judgment itself, of course, was not a problem. And several other factors affecting the feasibility of a retrial. And we have dealt with those factors in our written response, and I refer you to the primary paragraphs for votre réponse écrite et je vous renvoie essentiellement au paragraphe 49 à 52. The appeals chamber's own power to order a retrial, regardless of the remedy she requests. In the end, of course, the former prosecutor never had to decide. The appeal was rejected, and the acquittal upheld. The former prosecutor has never had to decide because the appeal was rejected. The former prosecutor took a reasonable position on conditional release, and she was always transparent with the appeals chamber and with Mr. Blegoudet about the remedy she sought and its relevance to conditional release. And Mr. Blegoudet concerning the Thirdly and finally, there are some features of Mr. Blegoudet's position respecting conditional release which are peculiar to his situation, but which I won't address in the open session, and we dealt with those in paragraphs 46 and 53. Dont je ne vais to sum pas up, Mr. Blegoudet's conditional release pretend, uh, pending en, appeal en, en cannot public. support an argument in our submission that there is conclusive proof he fell victim to a miscarriage of justice. The final point I can make very briefly relates to the appeal itself. Et enfin, le dernier point que je voudrais soulever concerne l'appel en tant que tel. Cannot be described as frivolous. L'appel du procureur ne peut pas être décrit comme étant un appel frivole. Entered by the trial chamber, there was no case to answer stayed at the trial. Demandé par la chambre de première instance, à l'étape 
The appeal raised for decision serious issues of law, procedure, namely compliance with the provisions of Article 74.5 and the legal standard of proof test and its proper application to no case to answer a motion. A law dismissed by a three to two majority in the appeals chamber, as the prosecutor has pointed out, drew two strong dissents. Such an appeal cannot be described as frivolous. Mr. Brigoudet criticizes the way the former prosecutor framed her appeal on grounds of legal or procedural errors and not on the basis of errors of fact. Et M. Blégoudet critique la façon dont l'ancien procureur a formulé son appel sur des motifs juridiques ou des erreurs procédurières, mais non pas sur la base d'erreurs de fait. Cependant, les appels, le recours ne peuvent être formés seuls sur la base d'erreurs de droit ou de procédure, où deux juges d'appel dissidents auraient donné suite à l'appel du procureur sur la base d'erreurs alléguées de droit ou de procédure et leur impact, et aurait ordonné un nouveau procès. M. Blégoudet a également critiqué l'appel sur la base de l'approche de la de la, de la question de nouveau procès par l'accusation, et j'ai déjà abordé cette question. J'avance que l'appel n'offre aucun confort à M. Blégoudet et à sa requête indiquant qu'il fait qu l'objet d'une erreur judiciaire grave et manifeste. Je vais revenir là pour l'instant, Mme la même issue des juges, et aucune des allégations de M. Blégoudet prises individuellement dans leur ensemble permet d'établir des faits probant, prouvant une erreur grave et manifeste de justice. Et, Madame le Président, Mesdames les juges, Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le juge, pour toutes ces raisons, nous considérons que la demande de Monsieur Blégoudet dans le cadre de l'article 85.3 doit être rejetée. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Représentant du Bureau du Procureur, Monsieur Stewart. That is Mr. Stewart. Je vais à présent donner la parole à un représentant du greffier, M. Hentens. Je prononce bien votre nom. Am I pronouncing your name well? Absolutely. Continue in Thank English, you very much, please. if you um, allow me, uh, President, uh, Your Honours. Um, insofar as it is helpful uh, in view of the purpose of this um, hearing, in open session, what, uh, Alors, what I can submit on behalf of the Registrar is that the uh, Appeals Chamber judgment uh, has been uh, 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 considered and is being implemented by the Registrar. That is to say, insofar as the Registrar was directed pursuant to Rule 185 uh, 1 of the Rules of Procedure um, to make such arrangements as considered appropriate as soon as possible for the safe transfer of Mr. Blegoudet to a state of states contemplated in that rule, taking into account, taking into account the view of the acquitted person. If it is helpful de uh, for Your Honours, for the Registry uh, to briefly highlight some of the points we have submitted in our confidential filing, um, I would respectfully request that we go into nous, private session. Um, que nous soulignons certains des éléments que nous avons présentés dans notre écriture confidentielle. Mais pour ce faire, je vous demanderai de bien vouloir passer à huis clos partiel, Madame la Présidente. Si cela vous est utile que j'aborde ces éléments.
C'est bon. C'est bon. Okay. Madam President. We're back in open session, Mr. Ma okay. Madam President. Very well. Nous vérifions d'audience, nous sommes de retour en audience Beaucoup. publique, Madame la Présidente. Thank you very much. Prosecutor, you can Monsieur le procureur, vous pouvez répondre à la question de maître de, de l'honorable Ougalde. Je vais vous juste répondre à question de la question de la question Terminology of her was just to, uh, in, in the filing, referring to my predecessor, was, was simply a, a term of, of art in the drafting to separate uh, the two terms of office. But in terms of uh, specific question, the prosecutor embodies in my view the office. There's a continuity of responsibilities under the statute, question, je pense que such that on the 15th of June, the sun, there was no sunset clause that would give rise to any even guillotine effect, and those responsibilities are continuous. Il n'y a pas eu euh, le 15 juin euh, euh, fin des responsabilités avec euh, coupure de tout ce qui avait été fait auparavant, pas du tout. Il y a une continuité entre les euh, mandats. With your permission. The question that I'm going to address is Vous pouvez y aller, Monsieur Stewart. You may go ahead, Mr. The question that I'm going to address is what um, the, the conclusive facts Mr. must Stewart, be present to prove a grave and uh, la question qui a été posée, quels sont les faits uh, course, qui doivent être prouvés pour uh, prouver qu'il y a eu uh, abstract, erreur judiciaire uh, grave Honor, et manifeste Alors, bien sûr, by, by je pense que de façon uh, abstraite, je pourrais répondre uh, à cette question en disant tout or, simplement uh, gross, uh, que des faits uh, probants qui démontrent qu'il y a eu malveillance of, ou of faute lourde are, are uh, de l'administration de la justice qui fait que les droits fondamentaux de la personne ont été complètement battus en bras. Je peux répondre très rapidement. Mais pour ce qui est de notre affaire, et je pense que Maître Knops, lorsqu'il a répondu, a essayé de revenir sur l'affaire dont vous êtes saisi. Alors je suppose que une réponse très simple consisterait à dire que lorsque nous avons le bénéfice du recul, lorsqu'il y a eu enquête, lorsqu'il y a enquête, le procureur pensait qu'il connaissait l'affaire, qu'ils avaient compris le contexte et il euh, pensait qu'il ce qui s'était passé pendant euh, la, la, la période post-électorale et le rôle joué par euh, M. Boudé. Mais pendant les enquêtes et, 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 au fil des semaines, le procureur n'a pas euh, méconnu ou, ou euh, négligé les éléments de décharge, ce qui ont été communiqués à la défense, ce qui a permis à la défense de procéder à des contrats interrogatoires de témoins. Alors, je veux dire, en un mot commençant, d'après ce que je comprends, a great deal of emphasis on the fact that, La défense uh, the, the, a beaucoup the... insisté sur le fait que les troupes gouvernementales ont essuyé des attaques et qu'il y avait une certaine personne qui était active dans certains quartiers d'Abidjan. Donc il s'agissait en fait d'une guerre urbaine, en quelque sorte, d'une guérilla urbaine. Alors, bon, le procureur pensait que cela était le contexte et que c'était des choses qui se sont passées. Mais le problème pour le procureur était de savoir si cela justifier euh, le ciblage de civils. Le procureur ne le pense pas. Et c'est ce qui s'est passé. Donc, et c'est ce qu'il voulait prouver. Mais cette thèse, en quelque sorte, a été réfutée, n'a pas été retenue. Et le procureur lui-même la procureure, elle l'a accepté. Elle a accepté que cela avait été rejeté de façon cinglante. Mais est-ce que cela était si déraisonnable C'est pour cela qu'il faut se pencher sur les opinions dissidentes. La, Madame la juge Erea Kamoucha a peut-être vu une thèse plus restreinte de, euh, du procureur. Mais elle, elle a pensé qu'il s'agissait d'une affaire qui appelait une réponse. Alors, je ne suis pas en train de vous suggérer pendant une seconde euh, qu'il faut revenir sur l'innocence de M. Blégoulet, puisqu'il a été euh, déclaré non coupable et nous l'acceptons. Mais après avoir fait l'objet d'une poursuite euh, qui n'a pas abouti, est-ce qu'il a été la victime d'une poursuite abusive À notre avis, non, puisque ses droits ont finalement... Euh, été retenu et justifié. Ah, excusez-moi. My friend has referred to 
si vous me m'y autorisez encore, mon ami, mon confrère, a fait référence au fait qu'en février 2018, le 9 février 2018, pour être précis, il y a une ordonnance qui a été rendue sur la conduite de la procédure. Il est important de ne pas oublier ce que faisait la Chambre à ce moment-là. Donc je vais vous donner lecture du paragraphe 10 auquel la chambre a fait référence Maître Knopf. Voilà comment il commence. La Chambre rappelle que la défense de M. Bagbo avait indiqué que la Chambre, en partie des participants, devait pouvoir apprécier la thèse de l'accusation au vu du nombre important de témoins qui sont parlé au début du procès. Le procureur devrait présenter un mémoire en première instance stage, in accordance with its statutory powers and responsibilities, and with a view to meeting its obligation to ensure the fairness and expeditiousness of the trial, the Chamber considers it indeed necessary to invite the prosecutor to file a trial brief containing a detailed narrative of her case in light of the testimonies heard and the documentary evidence submitted at trial. More specifically, she should indicate to the Chamber in which way she thinks the evidence le procureur est aussi invité à déposer un mémoire en première instance contenant le récit contenu des témoignages. L'interprète indique que M. Stewart dit très rapidement et qu'il ne dispose pas du texte. Alors je ne vais pas vous donner lecture, mais il y a également le paragraphe 14 par lequel certaines instructions sont données à la défense et sur la façon de poursuivre la procédure. Alors ce n'est pas exactement ce que vous avez dit, Maître Knopf, la Chambre a essayé d'organiser et de structurer la quantité invraisemblable d'éléments de preuve, et ce de façon intelligente. Merci beaucoup. Monsieur Blé Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup. Monsieur Blé vous avez besoin d'un besoin urgent Vous pouvez y aller. Très rapidement. Nous allons faire cette concession. Nous allons faire cette concession. Nous allons faire cette concession. Nous allons faire concession. En attendant, nous retournons well, en, waiting, en, attendant, we'll en, attendant, nous retournons en session privée.
c'est bon. Okay. Merci. 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 Of our exchanges. Very well. Thank you, court officer. We can say that I was saying our that hearing day today has now our concluded. Uh, uh, we can say I don't that see anybody have hearing any other today. day used to bring this now to the end at the moment. So, Sinon, as such, we shall I adjourn. Don't see anybody having and any the other chamber will take into account to bear. At the moment, different donc, uh, information so that is such gathering uh, adjourn from the start. The chamber uh, will take into account all the and it shall take into account information that is a part gathering uh, and from the start who have taken part in the proceedings and it will render its decision. And it shall take into account the appropriate parties and all who have taken part in the proceedings so and it will render its decision on the agenda. The appropriate judge now consider. That the so chamber is withdrawn on the agenda that the case now is adjourned, and the chamber shall withdraw. That the chamber can withdraw. I'd like to thank you. Consider your that the case is adjourned, and the chamber shall withdraw. I'd like to thank you for your attention.